Coffee with a Coastie is brought to you by On the Coast Publications, the publishing house for On the Coast families and On the Coast Over 55 community magazines on the central coast of New South Wales. Welcome to Coffee with a Coastie. Today we have the great pleasure of coming into the studio to catch up with the wonderful Maz and Maddie from the Central Coast Hit 101.3 Breakfast Show. Welcome, Maz and Maddie. Thanks, guys. Thank you. It's good to be here. It is, and thank you very much for welcoming us, welcoming us into the studio. Mate, it's been 20 years or just over 20 years since the two of you first met. And, um, so, yes. This could go anywhere, right? This could go anywhere. By looking at us, it's start... not possible. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You look way too young. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, you met when you were 10. No, yeah. no, no. I know, I know. You were very young. You were like in the crib. Yeah, yeah, we, met at, yeah we met at daycare. Yeah, uh, that's no. right. That's right. Your parents. Yeah, no. But having been such a long time, what was your initial thoughts when you got to know you were going to be working together? Well, uh, I, I've i always wanted to do a brekkie show with Matt. So, And that sounds a bit weird, but, like, we're radio people. So when we met, we met in radio. We were, like, just cutting our teeth. Yeah. Junior producers, no idea how radio worked. And I think at the time we we were both just in love with the idea of radio and you don't meet people like that along the journey so often. No. And so Matt's always been somebody that I'm like, if I could do a brekkie show at the right season of my life, I want to do it with this guy because he's integrous, he's kind, he's funny. Like there's so many things about Matt that just work for radio. And so when this opportunity came up, I was like, we have, this is the time. Like this is, remember 20 years ago when we are like, we should do a breakfast radio show together. Like it really is. Just shooting for the stars. Like, yeah, yeah, like with yeah. no idea at the time that we would even both stay in radio or like pivot out and pivot back in. So for me, it was just a no brainer. And I've just been like so excited about getting the show on the air. Yeah. And when Maz called me, like it was a no brainer. She said, would you be interested if you wanted to throw your hat in the ring? And I was like, oh, just give me a sec. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah, absolutely. Like to be able to come full circle and mm. um, be in an environment with Maz doing Brecky Radio is great because like it's, knowing what Maz has done with her career and she's a fantastic broadcaster and to be able to come back and like Maz said, at this time of our lives, to be able to be doing this style of radio, which we love doing, yeah. is really special. So it was, yeah, it's, it's quite surreal to be honest. Yeah. Like a, probably 10 years ago, probably wouldn't have thought this would happen, you know, but now when it's, while it's happening, it's just like, it's a dream come true, really. Yeah. To be able to do a show with someone that you trust and know is very rare yeah. in radio. Not, I don't think there would be too many other shows that would have a 20 year history mm. yeah. in, yeah, in, in the game. And I think too, like a lot of the time, if you are like new with a co-host in a time slot, the first three months is like, figuring out the boundaries and like mm. what kind of a reaction I'm going to gauge with this sort of content. And like Matt and I have not had to do any of that because we just know each other and trust each other. So we can just get on with getting the show that we want to do on the airwaves every morning. And we, I feel like that's really resonated with people. You can tell you guys, you just flow, you just bounce off each other. It's Thank so you. natural. And it's interesting going from obviously yourself with Lakey as yeah. a dynamic between the two of you and then you guys together similar age, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, families, <laughs> kids at, you know, 12. Um, and, and so you're at this similar stage in life. So you've got this beautiful common ground, whether you're friends outside of work or not, but you've, you've no, just, we hate each other <laughs> outside. <laughs> yeah, no. Only when we're getting paid to yeah, be yeah, together. Yeah. No, he, Matt's but, the worst, um, but yeah. like on air, he's great. <laughs> yeah. But you're but right you, you though. See, yeah. Like you just, you just bounce off each other. Like, yeah. you know, the bluey conversations and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Like you couldn't have that with somebody that wasn't at, that stage because they don't know what Bluey is. Exactly. You've got to have another 10 year old in your house to know what Bluey is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like it or just... it would be weird if you did know what Bluey is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We have watched Bluey when the kids haven't been there because it's really oh. funny. Oh. It's so funny. Yeah. I love all the Aussie episodes. jokes. I, I've done that thing where I, the kids haven't been in the house for a good half an hour and it's still yeah, on ABC and Kids. And I'm like, yeah, why am I still watching yeah, this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. so good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's fabulous. 
Um, so Matt, I think it's hilarious mm. that you can remember when you met Maz, <laughs> but you can't remember when mm. you met your wife. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you find it just, hilarious. Does that ever come <laughs> up in like arguments, heat of the moments at home or oh, anything How many like times that? a day? Right. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it, it was, it was mentioned in our wedding speech that I can't, uh, I can't oh, remember no the moment. Way. To be fair, to be fair, I was working at a radio station um, when my wife came in for the job interview. So she saw me. This is how I justify not remembering it. So tell me if I'm doing a good job or not. But she came in, she saw me at the radio station, said hello, had a conversation as I was walking through. She remembered it. Then she got the job. Which Maz hired her for. Yeah, right? yeah it's a bit of a weird like so version of a love she triangle. She remembers that moment. I don't remember that first meeting, yeah. but I think that's okay, but clearly not. I think to make you feel better, Maddie, like I remember the first time I met your wife and I don't remember the first time I met you. Yeah, okay. So, so there's there something we... about her, like I think that that just pays itself back. Yeah. It balances out? <laughs> yeah, great. Basically, yes. you're not memorable. That. I think that's how we're <laughs> trying to story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, but no, it does get brought up. Don't worry about <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little just a little, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she's got that on you. Yeah. <laughs> but she's stuck around 17 years and uh, well, she we haven't looked back, so, yeah. Nice. Congratulations. That's an effort. Mm. <laughs> that is. Maz, I don't know if you, did you tandem skydive or you skydive, skydive? I have skydove. Is that a word? Yeah. I've skydiven. Sky <laughs> I've jumped out of several planes. <laughs> I've, Voluntarily. I've, I've tandem skydive three times. Yeah, I, it's always been with somebody else. It's strapped to like your back. Oh, yeah. You're strapped to their front. Correct. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, same. So. Have you, has your husband skydived before? No, he hasn't. Do you try to convince your husband? I don't want him to skydive. I've done all the fun stuff and I'm like, Glenn, I've done it all. You don't need to do it. It's fine. Because I'm like, we have a family now. We're not like I did all of that stuff in my twenties, yeah, right? Yeah, when yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. you know what? If I die, whatever. No responsibilities. Not leaving a mortgage for somebody to pay off. It's all good, right? He's uh, short, isn't he? <laughs> Actually, mm. but no. I he he has talked about it, and maybe I wouldn't. I would in seriousness. I wouldn't discourage him if he really, really wanted to do it. I would be like, go for it, because it is an amazing experience. But I, I don't know if it's, I feel like some, I, when you get to your 40s, I think some, there's some things if you haven't done them, it's like, well, you missed the boat. Yeah. I even you look know? at roller coasters now and I go, yeah, uh, nah. I don't need that in my life anymore. Like 20 years ago, I would have done it in a heartbeat, but no, no, I'll, I'll watch. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like Little the only way I'm coming out of an aeroplane is in a body bag. Oh like, yeah, this, right. Like, that ain't happening. Like yeah. I've watched him do it three times and he did it with my dad and your mum. I'm like, no. No, it's not, it's not for everyone. Ground. It's not for everyone. Yeah, I feel okay. really lucky that I, and it was for work that I got to do all yeah. these amazing experiences. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm glad that I've done it. I brag about it all the time. And Glenn's like, oh, I've never done it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most amazing. I, I remember back when I did it, and you're right, actually. I've stopped telling as many people about it as I've got older, so maybe there's something in that. <laughs> <laughs> but I know at the time I was like, not everybody should have kids, but everybody should be jumping out of a plane. And <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, like it was crazy. It's a real rush. It's a real yeah, rush. Yeah. 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 No, thanks. <laughs> um, Maddie, so you've mm. had an eclectic career. Yeah. Pastry chef, producing radio shows, then stint in travel presenting, football presenting. When you're in high school, could you have imagined you would have such an impressive resume? No. High school me would be absolutely pinching himself right now, knowing what I've done. I've, I feel very blessed to have had the life that I have. I feel very lucky as well, like being in the right place at the right time a lot of the time. But um, no, not at all. I, I knew at high school I wanted to be a performer of some sort, but um, I, I, I had to find what it was. I tried to dance, I tried to, and I couldn't dance. I tried to do musicals and I couldn't sing. I tried to act and I was an over-actor. <laughs> um, but no, not at all. Like I used to, I used to listen to radio a lot as a kid, um, you know, that would be getting up in the morning with dad and listening to AM before he went to work and then switching it over to FM and listening to certain shows that I really enjoyed. And then like to know that I'm doing radio now, that, like 15 year old me would be losing his mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I remind myself of that daily. I'm like, it's, I never take it for granted. Like being able to be on, I like, you know, I was doing Metro radio when I was 20. Three, you know, like that just blows my mind. You know, you set a goal in life and you, you get to do it is yeah. just, is very surreal. So I feel very lucky. Yeah. Very cool. You're also very talented. 
Thanks. I can't oh. say that, Maz. I was waiting for you to jump uh, in with that. <laughs> that's the disclaimer. Like, we have to compliment yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, thank, thank yeah, you, Maz. Yeah. It's in the contract. So did the, out of the 20 years, like, that you were from beginning to end, mm. did you always keep in contact with each other over that period of time? Or not no, really. you no not contact, really. We, not away not then... directly, but I think, like, just thanks to social media and LinkedIn, mm. uh, yeah, I, you, you know, is. yeah, like, I... I saw like fly on the wall type stuff. Yeah. It's like, and Matt over posts on social. So I was like, I know exactly <laughs> yeah. what's going on in Maddie's it's life. True. It's true. And yeah. so I think like through, yeah, like we kind of just were, you know, swimming alongside each other, yeah. just knowing that you were doing stuff and I was yeah. doing stuff. And, and Maz then... was doing breakfast. I was doing drive. You know, yeah. we, we knew what we were doing. Maz was at MTV. I was still in radio at the time. Like some and... sort of almost crossover. Like just mm. when you look back, you're like, oh, we've woven these really yeah. different paths, but then we landed in this spot at this time and yeah. we really think that it's like the perfect timing for this show. It just gave me goosebumps when you said ah. that because everything happens for a reason as far it as does. I'm yeah. concerned. Like it, it totally all just, does. Yeah. 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 It's very cool. And that's what you talk about the end of the weaving. So you, you've both drifted off and you've drifted off to presenting and then come back to radio over time. What brought you back to radio? Um, well, so I... Um, so I got fired from radio in 2015 from this very company. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I wasn't going to bring that up. Um, I'm happy to talk about it though because like that, so I worked with Dan. So the Dan and Maz show was like a seven year in the making overnight success story. And we did one year of breakfast radio thinking it was going to be the rest of, you know, we were like, we're going to be a heritage show. This is going to be a decade. And then 10 months in, um, somebody walked in the building that didn't, like how young and fresh we sounded and wanted to spin it all on its head. And so we got shown the door. And so it took me a while to get over that. And I think when I, I, so the following year, we sort of were like, you know, shafted to the weekend slot to die, slow radio death. And then our contracts weren't renewed. And I got out of radio and I was really bitter about it because I think I'd spent so much of my life and career working towards this like pinnacle breakfast Mm. job in Sydney. And then, It just all blew up in my face. So I then tapped out of radio and I like opened a gym and went on a whole like fitness thing and um, studied nutrition and did wellness coaching and quit drinking and wrote a book about it. And then I, and then I became a mum and we, we moved to the central coast because we couldn't afford to buy a house in Sydney (laughs) and we moved here and I had my son and um, just after Henry's first birthday, um, Jace, who was overseeing um, here and the Newcastle radio station, rang me out of the blue and was like, hey, I've heard a rumour that you're living on the Central Coast. And I was like, I am. <laughs> and he's like, well, I need someone to do a maternity leave contract for six months. Would you be interested? And I said, absolutely not. Uh. <laughs> and then about I, I thought about it for a week and I had this whole epiphany of like, I can't show my son to like grab life by the balls if I'm not going to do it. Like how do I expect my kid to be a yes guy if I'm not going to be a yes guy? So purely for my son, I rang Jace back and I said, I will come and do six months because I, I want to be able to say to my kid, I did like mummy did this thing so you can be brave too because I was so scared to come back mm. and I'm still here two years later. <laughs> <laughs> so again, it just all... Like I said, yes, the door opened, it worked. Like, And now this iteration of that story is so perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 yeah, that's good. That's, and that's, uh, it's funny you touch on that with the whole, the kids thing. It's part of the Coffee of the Coast and getting out and meeting people and just to say to my kids, like, yeah, come on. We're like, doing you it. Do, You've got to do yeah. this stuff, mm. right? Yeah. Sometimes you, you it's can't, scary. You, can't, but... you know, as scary as it is, coming into this studio, talking to you, whatever that may be, um, you got to do it. You can't, yeah. you can't not do it if it feels right. And, and you get one it, crack, you, know? you get that's one it. crack and you know what, that's it. just give it a go. It and the, work, that's it. And, and, and the older yeah. I'm get, that's exactly right. And the older you get, the more you realize it too. And the, yeah. the worst that can happen is no, or you don't like something, yeah. yes. you know, and what have you lost a little bit of that's time? It. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's, that's, but you what, always learn something. Yeah. Big time. Whatever yeah. the takeaway is. Totally. Um, Maddie, so your first mm. experience on radio was over 20 ish years. Yeah. Say that. Yeah. yeah not yeah. old enough, but yeah. that's okay. <laughs> um, co hosting a show now with Maz. Mm-hmm. Um, is it everything that you dreamed it would be? Yeah. And then, especially having Rosso ring on your show <laughs> 20 years later after you started with them, yeah. with Rosso, like that's kind of surreal. Really surreal, really special. And it's an, another one of those moments where it's. 
it, I know that I'm present in it now, but I, like in give me another few weeks to process exactly what's still happening here because it is it is how special it really is. But you know, it has been 20 years, and I, I, there's been some bumps along the way as well. You know, I, you know, you don't work in radio without being fired. I don't think, and that's that's happened to me as well. And I, <laughs> that's so true. And, and I, like I walked away a little bit bitter and jaded for a while as well, and then to be able to come back and to be able to do this style of radio. Um, with Maz is is great, and we we learnt our chops from working on the American Rosso breakfast yeah, both show. Of us. Um, yeah. So to have both the boys call in, and then we call them friends now. Like Rosso yeah. was my groomsman at my wedding. Oh, like wow. um, he called me yet on Friday. You know, we, we yeah. like just to touch in. How's it going? To have a mentor like that who you can also call a friend mm. is super special. Um, it is everything. It really is. And we've got such a great team here. Like it's, yeah. it's a small team, but shy guy, Luke, our producer, yeah. he is like, he's, he's a weapon. yeah, he's he the best. He's going to be something weapon. big. He'll be running radio stations one day that, yeah. kid. He's um, amazing. so yeah, no, I, I, I know how, how special this is and uh, it is everything I want it to be and more. Um, but like, I know once I've fully processed what's happening, it's going to be very special. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so Maddie, you started. Uh, Maz, sorry, you started out in radio at the ground level as well. Worked yeah. your way up to this point. Totally. Um, did it always feel like you were on the right path, or did you have <sighs> moments where you go, "Oh, I really don't know about this"? I don't like. Dissimilarly to you, mm. I had a plan when I was fifteen. Mm. I was like, "I'm going to be on MTV," and then I actually did that plan. So, mm. like, I started in radio purely because I just wanted to get into media at some level to basically work my way into somehow being a presenter on MTV. So because I've always been so like headstrong and driven, even if I was on the wrong path, I would tell you it was the right path. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Like I've really <laughs> been one of those people, which I now realize is very intimidating for other people to be around. <laughs> I have, and so I've been told by some of my friends, they're like, we're so glad you're more chilled out now, babe. <laughs> but I feel like I've got nothing to prove anymore. So I think yeah. that's the difference. Like I've always just felt like my path is my path because I'm choosing it regardless of like, even when I got let go from radio, it was like, well, then this is the path. So I'll just make this work for me. Yeah. Like I always that's turned it step. into a win, but I, I do feel like performing out of this space now, I'm my most authentic self. I'm so content and grounded and chilled. And I, Whereas, you know, 10 years ago, I was performing out of an insecure, an insecure space where I felt like, am I even good at this? Whereas now I'm like, I'm really good at this. And it's okay to admit that. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. it is. And I think like on the other side of 42, there's something, I don't know if it's the same with guys, but I know for me, like I was 40 last year, something changes. It switches. Absolutely. Yeah. And you do, you get to this point where like, I actually don't have to prove anything to anybody yeah. or give anyone a, an, an explanation or a reason as to why I'm doing something or making this decision. This is just it. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, that's it. Agree. Yeah. yeah. It happened for me when we had kids, I think. You know, okay. there was that sort of I like the my ego went out the window. Yeah. And I, as soon as Billy was born, I've got three now, but Billy was our first, it was like, what? Well, it's not about me anymore. No, like it's, so it's about, it's about being dad and that that's that's kind of where I'm at. Like I've walked down the street with poo on my shirt and not and I was like, well, ten years ago I would have freaked out about walking down the road <laughs> shit in my shirt. You know? Like, <laughs> but but it's, you know, like your yeah. ego's gone. And that yeah. that's and that's that was that was the moment for me. Yeah. Was it your poo or was it? Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Walking down the street, ago, what time of day yeah. was it? Let's just clarify <laughs> the situation. <laughs> that and I'm thinking 10 years ago would have been different poo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Maddie, you, mm. you regularly called into the American Rosso show. Yep. And from what I understand, stalked Maz. Correct. The Nova Street team. Yep. To get your way, to nudge your way into a job. Yep. That many years ago. What would your advice be um, to a young radio enthusiast now who's trying to break into the industry? <sighs> I think the stalking laws have changed dramatically in the in the last you twenty years, so you'd probably now get arrested. For that behavior. Um, oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But that's that's how bad I wanted it, and I, and like to think that like hitting up Maz and Brad on the streets all those years ago, and then. 
I calling into a radio show, dropping off profiteroles to a radio station um, would end up getting me uh, a gig as a junior producer is just mind blowing. Um, but that comes back to visibility. I think that, that just getting in people's faces and You're creative with it too. Yeah, and well, and it's and the landscape's changed a lot from when we were doing well junior producing twenty years ago, uh, and so's radio. And I think anyone can start a podcast these days. And I think. If, if you want to be on radio, do it. Just just do it. Start recording. Record stuff. Do stuff. Put it on socials. Get on get on Instagram. Get on TikTok. I got picked up to do Channel 7 Sydney Weekender from Instagram videos. That's how Channel 7 approached oh, me and found me. Was so I was doing cooking videos with my daughter yep. and they saw that and went, this guy would be good for doing some presenting stuff for Channel 7 and I'm still doing that eight years later. Um, so visibility. Just get out there. Put it in people's faces and... Don't be afraid of people saying no. That just yeah. sure, cool, all right. You don't like it? I do. Someone else will. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's yeah. my advice. Yeah. It used to be. It used to be. You know, you, you just re- go to radio school, do that. And I know the people at Afters would hate hearing me say this, but because you pay a fortune for a fee, and you do get jobs. Everyone that quali- uh, that graduates at Afters gets a job, but that might not be the job for you. Do what you want to do and stick to it. Yeah. Mm. And I just also add, like, don't, just don't be afraid to work for free. Like I, I answered phones on Jimmy Z's Saturday night show (laughs) for zero dollars every Saturday night for like maybe six or eight months before I got a job that paid me a casual wage at Nova back in the day. But I just wanted to be in the building because I was so obsessed with this medium, you know? And so I think passion can really be like such a great source of inspiration. Just like get in, get your hands dirty and work your butt off. And you have to work hard. Yeah. yeah I worked nice. reception at Nova for oh, eight months, nine months, just because yeah. I knew that would get me a wage and I'd be in the building. Yeah. Just a receptionist answering phones. It was a great gig. Yeah. I loved it because you got to meet everyone. You knew everyone in the building, what everyone did. Um, but that wasn't my end goal. I, I didn't want to be office manager or general manager, but it was just, you know yeah, what, that's well. the job that's going at the moment. That's I'll the one I'll it. take. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah, cool. So, Maz, out of all the roles you've done, all the people that you've met, so many. Who <laughs> was the one that took your breath away, and why? Matt Baisley. Oh. So, oh, well, sorry, you're asking. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Present company. So. <laughs> okay, gotta put that caveat in there. Put that yeah. caveat in there. Yeah. Except for Matt. Yeah. Um, do you mean like interviewing wise, or? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, it's really hard. I can't pick one. Okay. But I think like. I, when I this when I interviewed Pharrell Williams a little while ago when I was doing the Dan and Maz show, I had this moment where, and 2014 was a really critical year for me. It was the year I realised that I was a functioning alcoholic and I needed to stop drinking. But it was that year um, I did this, we did this interview with Pharrell and like love him as an artist but wasn't really expecting it to be, I was just expecting it to be like, here's your new album and like everyone loves your freaking song and like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but we were, we just were having this chat and he said, cause he just said something like along the lines of, he's like, well, you know what it's like to have a gift, right? And it just, I don't know, it just imprinted on me. And I started crying in this interview and he was like, I get it. And I see it. And I'm like, wow. and I just got oh, wow. like, probably like. All of the validation I'd ever wanted in my life from this one person in this one moment who sat with me and held space for me, even Mm. though it was about him, to acknowledge you're sitting here because you're good at what you do. I'm sitting here because I'm good at what I do. And so, like, we can be safe in this space together. And so as much as I want to, you know, say it was at an MTV after party or whatever, like that moment, like I'll never forget that moment because I felt seen. And I think everyone just wants to be seen and heard. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have me that's crying. Yeah, that's powerful. <laughs> Very so, powerful. I'm, I'm, I'm just like a friend cry. Like if I see no, someone cry. I'm a hard <laughs> empath. I'm a hard empath. I get it. Yeah, it was really, it was really. And so unexpected too. I think that's why Very it blew me someone. away. I was yeah. like, oh my God, like you see me. Oh, yeah. It was cool. Awesome. <laughs> Do you still have the audio of that? Oh, I don't think so. Mm, I know. Incredible. I know. I didn't think, I didn't think that's the other thing I never did. Uh, no. I never thought I should keep all this stuff. No, I, I never kept like, anything. Yeah. And when I, and then when I got fired, I was like, burn it all. 
<laughs> Pharrell thinks I'm good. I don't care what you think. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> wow. That's, oh, dear. Powerful. <clears throat> Maddie, well, talking about how you come across as a very confident go getter. Um, and I you believe you must have been like that, but I don't know for sure, but you're from a very early age. Um, how do you instill that? sort of level of enthusiasm and confidence in your kids. Hmm. Oh my God, your kids. Well, Billy is so confident. Billy? She's amazing. Yeah. Man. Um, She's, very She's confident. amazing. Yeah. 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 Um, I, my parents, my parents were strict growing up, uh, but I look back now and they just gave me every opportunity to do what I wanted to do and to be me. Like there's things that I did as a kid where I'd probably like, I'd would I have like, would My let parents let me sing Christmas carols across the street to raise money for a charity, knowing very well that I couldn't sing. <laughs> I was in year six going to high school the next year. And when I turned up to the quadrangle in year seven, everyone was calling me, oh, there's Carol, you know, but, <laughs> but so I'd probably go, oh, Dale, you can't sing, you know, maybe, maybe to think of another way. But my parents just went, let him go, let him fly and see where he lands. Mm-hmm. And I think that's probably what I'm doing with my lot, just just let them fly and see how they go. And just that, I, I don't know. Parenting is really tricky because there's no, there's no rule books. There's no wrong or right. Um, we're just making it up as we go. And what I do is different to what someone else does. And I, I don't know what I'm doing to make them be the best they are, but I really hope it's working. Whatever I am doing is just letting them be them. I think, and understanding that they are all, all three of mine are very different. And I heard a really great, uh, a really great analogy of kids the other day. And some are dandelions and some are orchids. And so there's, there's kids that you can, dandelions will grow in a crack in full sun, not need water mm-hmm. and they will flourish. But there's orchids who need a bit more attention. They need to have the right conditions to grow and to flourish. They need to be watered at the right day and you need to look after them. And they're both as important as each other, but you just got to know how to manage the dandelion and how to manage the orchid. And that's kind of what the scenario is in our house. So it's just about managing, making sure we're giving the dandelion attention so it can flourish, but also managing the orchid at the right time so it doesn't you know, mm. fall apart. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, but I hope it works. And I hope it look, they look back and go, you know, we ha- I had a good childhood. That's, that's mm. all I wanted them to do. Yeah. Mm. Totally. They look like they're having lots of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, they're cooking my, videos and yeah. dancing and your makeup and all the rest of <laughs> them. I'm like, well, that looks like it's a fun house yeah. to live in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it, it, pale. We try and make fun. it fun. Yeah. 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 Um, as, so you stopped drinking over seven years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't drink. I haven't drunk for six years. Luke hasn't drunk for three. We've had a conversation about what it's going to be like for our kids when they get to teenagers and they're exposed yeah. to that world, having brought up, being brought up in a house where they're not exposed to adults drinking around them on a regular basis or anything like that. Mm. Have you had that conversation? Like, does Glenn drink? Or no, does- Glenn doesn't drink. Um, so I stopped drinking on the 1st of Jan 2015 and about 10, like for a month. And then 10 months later, Glenn was like, well, this is boring. <laughs> so then he stopped drinking too. And he wasn't a big drinker, but he was like, well, I just won't see. We both have a drink for a really long time. And look, we haven't had a, a big conversation about it. Henry's only three and a half. Um, but Glenn has two other kids who are 11 and nine. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, we're looking down the barrel of having a couple of teenagers um, yeah. in the house soon, which is terrifying. Mm-hmm. And I think... Honestly, I think this is what it will come down to. First of all, my hope and my wish is that by the time my child is a teenager, that drinking is the behavior that gets all of the questioning. Like, oh, yeah. you're drinking? Slip. What happened? Are you okay? Yep. You're having a drink. Is everything all right? Do you want to talk? Rather than, oh, you're not drinking? What's wrong with you? What happened, right? So that's my hope and my wish. Um, but I also just think like monkey see, monkey do. And these kids have never seen us drink alcohol. So they might go to another friend's house and their parents are drinking and they will go, but that's not the norm for us. Yeah. That's not the normal behaviour. And so I just hope, and we will have open dialogue and honest conversation about a transparency around 
this is the thing and let me tell you about my experience with it and let me tell you about how it can damage your liver and your brain and your body and it can, you know, get you at a high risk for cancer at a young age if you use it a lot. Mm. And so when we can have all of those conversations, I just trust that those kids are going to make the best choice for their health and for their brains and they probably won't drink alcohol, which is, you know, my epiphany as well. So I think yeah. it's the same with smoking too. Like as we both smoked in our 20s. Yeah. And so we haven't smoked for, well, we go up your 30th, so what, 15 years ago since we've yeah. had a cigarette. And that was like the thing to do. But now it's so hard to smoke anywhere. Yeah. Mm. Like and it, all the labelling and you yeah. know that it's like it's so, just so. I think alcohol is the next, like big alcohol is the next industry that will have a lot of yeah. reform. Um, and I think labelling will be a big thing where, you know, if you're going to think twice about buying a bottle of, whiskey if it says like this can cause cancer right yeah but that's what happened with smoke people yeah, still smoke now they do yeah that, but i think mm. significantly less people started smoking mm. after all of those messages were out there yeah so i think it i think it'll turn around yeah which is good yeah a Absolutely. bit of a like, comfort to know that your kids hopefully aren't going to get to a party and it's you know all crazy like it was 25 years ago when we were teenagers totally <laughs> we doing crazy stuff i know, <laughs> I know. crazy stuff so you both have a young, fa- both have young families. Um, how do you go juggling breakfast radio? I think you both. I know Maddie definitely still does a bit of presenting on the side. You obviously probably do presenting the on the side as well, as well. Yeah. Um, and then spending time with your family, getting up early. Like, how do you juggle all that? I don't know. <laughs> it just it, it just works. We just it make just it work. Went, yeah. Yeah. You just have to. I think. And I'll. I'll. Speak on behalf of myself, but also I think you're in the same boat. Like our partners are amazing. Like we can't do this unless our partners are on board. No. And this, so this job, you need buy-in from the work. other half. Yeah. yeah. You've got to have, like, so Glenn is the backbone. He's the, he talks me off the ledge when I don't want to do it. Like he is so supportive and there's no way this would work if we weren't like a 100% team playing family. And so it, it is we do this for the family buy-in, but also the family balance. So the beautiful thing about Brecky Radio is, yes, we get in early, but we get home early. Yeah. So I'm like hands-on doing the daycare pickup, you know, taking the dog for a walk, doing all of the stuff that I can do. I'm the most present mum, even though I have a full-time job, and that I really highly, highly value. So that's like there's everything's yeah. a trade-off, right? Yeah. So I get out of bed at four in the morning and I don't get to see my little boy. Well, I do. I go in and I look at him sleeping <laughs> just to check that he's breathing. I still do that. We all do that. Um, like so I times. go and I sneak in, and I but I don't get to spend time with him in the morning. But the trade-off is I get him all afternoon. Mm-hmm. I get to do like story time and bath time and all of that fun stuff as well. So and only you guys, are, you're very such similar. a team. Yeah, yeah no, and yeah. like Bella's been in my corner with this biz for the last. 17 years. And uh, this time around, she was just as excited as I was that I was doing it with Maz. So she, she, she was the one manifesting it. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, she it's, was bringing Maz. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> that's right. It yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's the balance, the same as Maz. So I get to go home and I get to do school pickup. I get to go do preschool pickup. I got to go and see my daughter do her Toastmasters speech competition at school the other day oh, because I was finished. You know, I get yeah, to go right. to cross. Is she doing Toastmasters? Oh, she's in year two. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, she won, by the way. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's so yeah. Her mother's genes are very strong. Um, <laughs> that's so impressive. But, and the, but also uh, Bella's work allows that sort of flexibility as well. So mm-hmm. she she's a voiceover artist, yeah. so she does voiceovers from home. We've got the microphone and the booth set up there. She can pop in and do that, or she waits till I get home and then she does all her work and then I'm there to do yeah. the dinners and the afternoons and footy training and soccer training and drama and musical theatre and some stuff for the kids as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it is, it is a, but I feel very lucky in that I get to be home at mm. that time. Like, and mornings are crazy. So, you know, it's a win-win for me. Uh, how are you going, babe? I can just hear the screaming in the back. Like, yeah, oh, good, good. Yeah, all right, I'll chat to you soon. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, but, it's a door. Just just walk through it. Yeah. Like, just, just, yeah. just walk yeah. through yeah. the door. <laughs> Put your shoes you? on. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it is a trade off, but it is um, very rewarding at the same time. How did, yeah. Can I ask? Like, obviously, early mornings, you must have some late nights. Like, what do you do? What's a prime like to get yourself all primed for like breakfast radio six o'clock? Got to be on. Well, I just don't have late nights to be really honest yeah. with you. Like, I 
I'm in bed, even on the weekends, like at 9, 9.30 at the late. I just don't, I just can't. Yeah. So I'm really disciplined there, yeah, slash yeah. boring, but really disciplined, <laughs> which means I can get up. So I get up at four and do 20 minutes of yoga. Um, and then I, yeah, and then I get into work and I'm, I'm like annoyingly bubbly at <laughs> 5, 5.15 in yeah. the morning. Like I do it. Yeah. And that's not an act. That's just who I inherently am. So it probably really pisses you off. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm oh, glad I've got God. someone to match me because I'm 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 annoyingly a chipper yeah, too. Chipper like too. and so it's a good yeah. It's so, been bred into me early mornings. Uh, it's I, same. We've uh, always, I feel like I've always done some form of shift work in yeah. in media. Even when I was out of media, I was um, coaching gym classes at my gym, and yeah. that started at five in the morning. In the morning. So I feel like it's just a part of, you know, who, who we are. And we, I don't feel like I have to psych myself up for the show. Like sometimes I have to calm down a little bit because I'm just too, yeah. <laughs> too excited. <laughs> That's awesome. So it's part of the personality for the gig. Yeah. I the late nights so. get harder though. Like as I'm getting older is I know how much I need my sleep. Like I'm, mm. I know I've got a gig coming up. This week, where I'll be working till like ten thirty, and that's, that's already giving me anxiety. Issue. Just thinking yeah, about yeah. it, like it's a, it's really exciting what I'm doing. Yep. But then I'm just like, oh man, like I yeah. I used to be able to do it like at midnight and then get up yeah. at four or go oh, to work bounce. in the bakery yeah. and just bounce back straight away. But not anymore. No, no, no. So change once you get to the other side. Changes, of man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So it's Saturday night. Kids are in bed. What's happening at the Baisley Compton household? Oh my god, I'm gonna let you. Well, we don't live together. No, 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 no. no, no. no. I mean, yeah, yeah. your house and your house. Yeah. 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 What's, what's like, happening? Each uh, other's hair. <laughs> just listening to smart. listening to our own podcast, <laughs> laughing at each other. Um, okay, no, you go first. I'll, do, I'll go first. Yes. All right. So I feel like our joints. Be more exciting. Well, not really. Yeah. Saturday nights is kind of um, like it's dedicated to my wife Bella and I, and just quality time. So. Kids are in bed, usually done and dusted by 7.30. We try and speed that process up the, so we get a little bit more time. But, um, like, we might order a pizza. I'll make a couple of margaritas and then we will sit and probably take 20 minutes to work out what we're going to watch. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> go through about eight trailers, nothing's good enough, and then resort to watching something that we've seen before. Yeah. Um, but, no, it's, it's really it's just the lounge. Yeah. yeah. Like, um. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's really is just our time to spend a night together. Cause I'm in bed before her every night. I go to bed usually about eight o'clock. She stays up and watches telly and has a life and I'm, I'm out. Packs so lunches. yeah, packs lunches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Getting washing sports uniforms or yeah. that kind of thing. But no, um, yeah, no, that it, Saturday night is just us only on the yeah. couch. Take away. That's it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much the same. But I will say, so I am an introvert. I'm an extroverted introvert. So that just really means like I don't love hanging out with heaps of people all the time. I don't like big groups. So when Glenn and I do catch up with our friends, it's like one family at a time. Like I can't do a big overwhelming. Yep. And so we might, like if we do social, we might do like an early Saturday afternoon social thing with one family and intend for that to last two hours and it ends up being like dinner at our place or so we, so we might, that would be our social time with other families, usually all in the parenting trenches, um, where we might like do pizzas at home or like just hang. And then everyone goes, everyone leaves at eight at the latest, hmm. latest, latest, <laughs> latest. Cause You're I'm cleaning up around them, I'm just giving just them cool. the hint. I'm just like, I'm done. And then it's just turning the lights off. Like, oh, I know how to, I know how to wind up a conversation because Glenn is one of the great social chatters. Like my husband's an extroverted extrovert. So yeah. he just loves a chat. And I've like, I've gotten the nudge so down pat. I can like bruise him with like a, the, like a ninja nudge, oh, which is like, let's wind it up now. Like Maz is tired, you know? <laughs> So, yeah, if we do social on the weekend, it'll usually be Saturday afternoon into evening. If not, it's a similar vibe, like Henry's in bed or if we've got the the stepkids, they might um, jump on an iPad and watch a thing and, and we're just like watching a telly show and then I fall asleep. Like yeah. I can't even watch a whole movie anymore. It took, it's, it took us like four 
times to try and watch a whole movie like, about a week or so ago because I just kept falling asleep or it just like Henry woke up or I was like, it's too late to start now. Like, it was a disaster. <laughs> yeah. So it's not it's not real showbiz <laughs> exciting, is it? No, it is, no. I wish I could lie yeah. to your faces and say. Getting private jets, yeah, going to the Bahamas. No. no. It's, it's pretty normal, kind of boring, but I, I love, love that about my great. life. Yeah, I love yeah. that about my life. Yeah. yeah. So the end of the year is approaching and normally that's a time to wind down, relax, kick back on the lounge on a Saturday night, but you're just starting a new breakfast show and ramping it up and it's all starting to come alive for the end of the year. Mm-hmm. What does the Maz and Matty show look like in 2023? Ask our producer. That's his <laughs> job. Oh, right. Let me go get him. <laughs> um, I, I think just hopefully a lot of the same um, for me personally. Yeah. It's just... Um, Maz and I doing what we do best and that's just talking to each other. And, um, we love opening phones, having people call in, chat to us. Uh, it just, it's, a, it's everybody's space, this yeah. show. And, you know, that's what I want. I just want more of the same. I just want to be here, entertain people from the coast, have, play some songs, have a chat with Mazzy and then sign off and go home and do it all again the next morning. Yeah, I agree. Like, even though, like, this is a new show, it's not in the sense that, because we've got that chemistry, we've got the trust, like, it's already there. So I feel like we just, like, we didn't just hit the ground running. Like, we've, we, we're, we like, well on our way, you know? So I feel like by the time Christmas comes around, it'll wind down. We go, all go off and have our respective holidays and a big break, and then we come back and, yeah, we just sign up and do it all again. Yeah. The thing that I love about this show is... And the feedback that I and Matt is getting, it's like we are just a reflection of people's lives and Mm. we're not trying to do anything. We're just genuinely being interested in each other, in each other's family life, in our extracurricular activities and bringing it to the safe space of radio with great radio sensibility. And people seem to be really loving that magic. And so we just want to do that, you know, and, and help people just want to be an easy listen. Nothing just, forced. Nothing That's the thing. Forced. Like today, um, I don't, I don't, I'm being time specific, unfortunately, for your podcast, but I am going to be this time because yeah. today on the show we spoke about Bluey. And when you yeah. have a conversation with someone, no matter where it is, at the park, at the soccer in the mornings, you don't talk through your conversation you're about to have and then have that conversation. But that you can hear that in some radio where yeah, they've yeah, really yeah. structured their yeah. conversation. Everyone, so Maz will come and go, Matt, I got. To, I want to talk to you about Bluey at ten past eight. Okay, okay, cool. And then we just open up our microphones and we have a conversation about yeah. Bluey. You know, it's not. There's nothing contrived. There's nothing fake. It's just real, organic honest, describing. organic yeah. conversations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's what I really like. And yeah. I'm turning forty next year, and I'm expecting a big party on air. So I, you know, that's kind of that's the other thing. Yeah. Yeah. Expectations <laughs> have been set. Yeah. <laughs> Big when, party. When no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Yeah. But seriously, something. A good present. A good present. Now it's a present. <laughs> no, I think You'll get a pen. Oh, well, that'll do. Oh, you with know. your name on it and your yeah. birthday. Yeah. 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 Engraving always Engraving goes well. Insane. Yeah. If my name was Bic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, I'm sure you relate. The Saturday nights, I'm sure plenty of people relate to the Saturday nights. So that's for sure. Well, it's been great to meet and chat with you both. And thank you, Maddie, Maz, okay. for, and Maz and Maddie. <laughs> like, actually, let's have a Who decided whose name went first? Okay. Oh, that's funny. Do you want me to read you the text conversation? Because we yeah, did text it, about it. it. Yeah. <laughs> reminded me that was, so like, our boss, do you want to find I'll it? I'll find it while you our talk. Our boss yeah. was like, is it Maz or Maddie or Maddie and Maz? And I was like, I don't know. Ask Matt. And he's like, you ask him. So I texted and I was like, which way around is it? Whatever you say, I'll go with. Yeah. Then we spent the weekend singing the jingle both ways around. Yeah. And then you said, so, so, Maz so or Maddie? sleep on it. Let me know what you think. Maz or Maddie, Maddie or Maz. Uh, and then you had to nudge me again. He forgot. Yeah. Maz it's is. like, hey, <laughs> have you made up your mind? Uh, <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I think I have. Uh, I think Maz and Maddie sounds better. And so I, that was that I was essentially rolls. how that happened. That, yeah. that was the conversation. Yeah. And I think I think Maz I, I don't know, it just worked. I've always had Maddie was always second in other shows that I've been on. Maz is, you know, established 
here on the coast. So yeah. I think it just makes the it most just, sense. It just rolls better. It and felt like it It sounded like, I don't know, and, it and could have gone either way. From but. a boring radio point of view as well, I, my role in the show, not only am I co-hosting, but I, I anchor. So I back announce the songs. I do the time. I will um, I brand the show, say what's coming up. So for me to say it's Maddie and Maz, I just prefer, I'm looking at Maz when I'm talking. So yeah. it's Maz and Maddie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. That, yeah. Just okay. for me, yeah. Yeah. just for yeah. flow better. That was yeah. the other one as well. That's yeah. a bit boring though. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And is there, so obviously you're behind the desk. Like, mm. you, uh, do you ever switch roles? Oh, no, God, you no. use a stage. Oh, on um, Sunday we, we nights. Do, We've got the Sunday night show. We do for show. a lot, like because I'm useless at it and it's fun for the boys to laugh at me. But I um back in another lifetime, I did panel a night show that I was on. And after that year, I just lied and said I could never panel because it was too stressful. <laughs> so if Very I had to, on. if I had to, I could probably learn. This is all new technology now, but I could probably learn. I could probably figure it out, but I much, much prefer just sitting and just <laughs> looking at Matt stress out and me just going, did you get that song, bro? Yeah. Good, okay, let's go. <laughs> and I love it. I love the craft yeah. of sound too. So to be able to know that Maz is about to talk about, she starts talking about pyjamas, I just go and bring up bananas in pyjamas and start playing that music. Or we get someone call yeah. in, her name's Roxanne, I can play the police. Yeah. You know, yeah, I just, yeah. I love the sound craft of the desk as well. Don't know if that's being a control freak, but it's, uh, <laughs> maybe. But um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love this part of the gig as well. So you were obviously able to get the song when you were talking about your Instagram profile song on Friday and yours was the um, Gwen Stefani. Gwen Stefani. Yeah. yeah. What are you waiting for? And then yours was Don't Rain on My Parade with the jazz yeah. hand. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. standing at my kitchen bench laughing. My, oh, my right. kid's like, Mama, what are you doing? And I'm like, just shush. I'm listening to the radio. <laughs> and, so, and I was thinking, so what pink was mine. Oh, oh that's nice. a good one. So yeah. we listened to that in the car on the yes. way here. I'm like, yeah. What was yours? What would yours be? Like if you had a walkout uh, song, what would yours be? Well, you know what? This is the problem. Like <laughs> I listen to a lot of different music, but I can never pick names out. And then Tensy come up to me the other day and said, so if it comes up, have you got one? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I think it like it, it, it changed throughout the years, but right now, how it feels is Eminem not afraid. Oh, I great. love that. Yeah, I was that's like, great. You know what? It's what it is right now. Awesome. Yeah, so, that's yeah. so good. I can see you walking out that's to that. What happens yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the new me. Door yeah. open. Yeah. 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 Just smoke partying. machines. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. just parting the sea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as we worked out, thank you. Maz and Maddie. That's yeah. right. Maybe to you, today. you make our marketing team very happy getting yeah. your branding right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And we even found out how that brand came about. And it's it's impressive that the two of you come up with it and it actually wasn't a producer or it wasn't um, whatever it was the two of you. Oh, you'd be surprised at some of the decisions we've had to make. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, so for everybody, be sure to tune in between 6 and 9 a.m. weekdays to catch up with Maz and Maddie for breakfast on Hit 101.3. Thank you, Maz and Maddie. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Cool.